Good morning guys, welcome to another episode of Oak Mountain ACODs. It's a beautiful sunny morning here in Oak Mountain. It's about three degrees Celsius. We've got a bit of snow on the ground from a storm yesterday. We thought it'd be a great time to do a comparison on some different size chainsaws to figure out which chainsaw best suits your needs in the woods. So what we've got here is three different chainsaws. We've got Husqvarna and we've got Still chainsaws. Uh, the biggest saw that we've got is a 036 still. This saw is uh, about 62 cc's. It's about 12 and a half pounds without the bar and the chain on it. And by far the most powerful one that we have here. The intermediate saw that we have is a Husqvarna 545. This is the first series of 545 chainsaw that Husky put out. It's a professional saw. It's about 50 cc's. And it's uh, a little over 10 and a half pounds. And this is a still MS-170. This saw is a 30cc saw, and it's about 8.5 pounds. So what we're going to do today is uh, see if bigger is always better. Okay guys, so the first order of business today is to cut this deadfall out of the trail. This is uh, about a 5 inch fur uh, that is blown over in one of the windstorms. And we could use the big bad 60cc chainsaw to cut this down, but I'm gonna have to reach up over my head, which I don't like to do anyway because it's a little bit more unsafe with a saw. And why would I want to put a 12 and a half pound saw up over my head to cut this little tree? For me, I'm gonna use this 30 cc still. It's uh, eight and a half pounds and it's gonna get the job done. It might take a little bit longer to work, but uh, it's gonna be safe and it's gonna be nice and light. And so that's the saw that I'm gonna choose for this job. So there you have it. The saw cuts quite quickly, clean and nice, and uh, it's very light to operate. So this is a great choice for a chainsaw if you're cutting some small diameter wood. Again with the little MS-170 still, 30cc chainsaw, 8.5 pounds, a great chainsaw for cleaning up limbs and stuff out of your trail. I feel like you could run this chainsaw all day if you had to. Uh, you hardly know that you have it in your hand. And uh, arguably I could probably sharpen the chain up a little bit, but it's a nice performing little chainsaw. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut a couple of hardwoods out of the way here, and then we're gonna cut this big fir tree down so that we can get some 16 foot logs out of it. So what I'm gonna do for this exercise is I'm gonna use my Husqvarna 545. This is a 50 cc chainsaw and it's about uh, 10 and a half pounds. So it's two pounds lighter than the 60 cc class. 
and it's about two pounds heavier than the 30cc class. But this is a good all-round saw for a job like this. So let's see how it performs. <laughs> Okay, this is a good all-round chainsaw, the Husky 545, 50cc class. I need to cut a couple of those yellow birch limbs off. It's a 10 and a half pound saw. I don't like running any saw over my head, but this is still light enough that I can get there and do that and still feel comfortable. <laughs> Okay guys, now we're going to take the, the big dog, the 60cc still, and uh, again, this is a little over 12 and a half pounds, it's a big saw, not something I want to lug through the woods every day, but we're going to go after that fur in the background there, and I think it's at least 12 inches diameter, so this saw is going to be up for the challenge, let's see how we do. This is a heavy saw, I know I've got it in my hands when I'm carrying it around. I'm gonna basically bush my way into this tree just like I would with any other chainsaw, and then we're gonna set up to cut it down. Okay, that tree was probably 14 inches. Really nice fir tree, very sound at the bottom. You can see that that 62cc still saw was up for the challenge. It never bogged down in the cut, and I didn't sharpen that saw before I started. It probably would have done a lot better if I would have, but that's a great saw for felling. The problem is, is it's darn heavy. And those of you that know me know that I'm not a big guy, but I consider myself to be in decent shape. And that is not a chainsaw that I want to lug around through the woods all day long. I can tell you that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to square up that butt. I want to get a nice uh, 16 foot log out of that tree. And I may be able to get two. I'm going to limb a little bit with this 60cc saw. But I can tell you it's too heavy for me to be comfortable limbing with. And I'm going to swap it out really quickly here for the 545. Okay, so you can see guys, that tree is actually almost 16 inches on the butt. Beautiful sound fur. But like I said, now I'm going to get the 545 going, the 50 class, 50cc class saw, and I'm going to limb the tree up with that. That's my preferred saw for a job like this. Yeah, 
You know, here's another tip while we're at it doing these saw comparisons. When you're limbing a big tree like this, you don't need to muscle this saw the whole way up the tree. Use the tree as a rest for the chainsaw, and every chance you get, set that saw down on that tree trunk to give your arms a break. Okay, there's the first 16 foot six log. It's a dandy. You can see that the 50cc class saw has more than enough power to work your way up these trees. And I gotta tell you, hats off to the old guys that ran these chainsaws and bigger saws than this in the woods all day long. Those guys were in shape. This is hard work. You gotta take your time and you gotta keep your wits about you so that you don't get hurt. Okay, that one's out of gas. So I think we'll finish up the rest of that with a little 30cc. I've got to walk along the edge of that ditch. I'll be running that saw about chest height. That's a great little eight and a half pound saw for a job like that. So we'll get that fired up. We'll probably get one more eight foot log out of this tree and then we'll get them on the Cranman log loader. Lanson, how old was that tree? 52. 52. So Lanson says that that fir tree had 52 annual rings on it. So a 52 year old tree, 16 inches on the butt. Looks like after it got going, it had really good growth year over year. You can see there was a couple years where the growth rings were a little bit smaller, but overall that seemed to be a great tree. Healthy at the butt. Probably could have left them a little longer, but we're in the business to find some big softwood trees to make eight by eight timber. And this one fit the bill. Okay guys, there you have it. 16 foot log, 12 foot log, eight foot log. Beautiful tree. And we showcased the 30 cc class, the 50 cc class, and the 60 cc class. They've all got their benefits. They've all got their downfalls. And I think you just need to choose the right saw that works for you. And it's always good to have a backup saw in the woods. So maybe you take that into consideration when you're picking up your second saw. Okay, Lanson's cleaning up the rest of the brush from that trail. This is my favorite part of the woods exercise is to get the Cranman log loader going and uh, get all the wood that we put on the ground onto the trailer. This makes it all worthwhile as far as I'm concerned.
Okay guys, so that was a little demonstration on the differences between a 30cc, a 50cc, and a 60cc class saw. Um, I myself prefer to go in the middle. I like to have the 50cc saw. It seems to have all kinds of power and it's just the right weight for me so that I can run the saw for three or four hours at a time without getting completely exhausted and jeopardize my safety. When I was a young fella, I never was really big in stature. And I remember when I was probably six or seven years old, uh, one of my family members got me a t-shirt that said dynamite comes in small packages. And uh, that's kind of how I feel about these chainsaws. That 50cc class saw really is dynamite. The other thing I'd like to say is sometimes size doesn't matter. So thanks for joining us on this episode of Oak Mountain ACOTS. You can see that uh, we got a little bit of hardwood for our firewood pile out today and we also got some beautiful logs that we're going to turn into timber next year when we get the sawmill on site. Uh, it's a beautiful day to be in the woods, but then again, any day is a beautiful day to be in the woods. So